Sorry, I can't help. Pew, 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 pew. Okay, there we go. Just needed it so I can edit it in tomorrow. Is that going to be the start of the episode? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another zany episode of Nerdy West Coast Swing, the podcast with pixels where the anchors are out of this world and the points don't matter. We are here to help train your eyes so you can learn faster and dance better. I'm Cassie Winter. I'm Alicia Marshall. If you're wondering who are we to be analyzing these pros, Cassie and I both have experience and training and both partnered in solo dancing. She has about 22 years and I have about 24. So tonight we are talking about, well, technically our, our title for this episode was The Eyes Have It. I teased it a little bit last week. We're talking about where to be looking and just kind of analyzing like where pros tend to be looking when they're dancing. And tonight we are looking at uh, Sean McKeever and Susan Kirkland from mm -hmm. Atlanta just recently. <laughs> Yep. Kind of uh, see if you can notice where their eyes are at uh, as you watch through. We'll talk All about right. it. <laughs> Link is in the chat. Go ahead and give it a watch. And when you're done, we'll get to analyzing. Is there anything, uh, any preamble you want to give? Just a short one. I would say generally there is like three different places that you'll see eyes going in general and then i would say for a spotlight situation there's four just in general for any type of social dance you'll probably see eyes either looking partner in the eye you'll see them either kind of relaxed dropped down to the floor or you'll see them looking at a specific point of their partner's body and then when it comes to spotlights the fourth spot is at the audience wherever they may be <laughs> uh, and then if a partner is spotting anywhere some random point in the distance if it's mm -hmm. not their partner um, yes also true i didn't add that simply because that's not something that happens all the time to the screen share do -do 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 -do. so i'll just start out talking about both of them actually they both uh have their eyes kind of dropped towards the floor um it kind of looks like they're looking at each other i think it's just more the proximity that they're at um because both of them kind of have <clears throat> their eyes and their heads dropped but this in particular is a moment that you really want to um, feel the connection so you wouldn't be necessarily <clears throat> looking towards your partner to see where they're at um, that's going to be more of a feel thing and so naturally when you're trying to switch your attention to that you're going to kind of drop the eyes because you don't so much need that particular uh information Thing I want to add, because um, when you are watching the champions do their spotlights, it's one thing because you know they all know each other. Yeah. Um, but something I know I've experienced in competition, uh, both heated format and spotlight, is that if my partner never looks at me <laughs> for the beginning of a song and they just go straight to looking at the floor mm -hmm. um, and like almost ignoring me, that yeah. doesn't feel good. Yeah. Um, and so like, especially if you don't know the person you're dancing with, making some kind eye contact to acknowledge that there's another person on, on the end of the connection, um, mm -hmm. and that you're two human beings <laughs> dancing together, not just two dancers dancing mm -hmm. together. It can have a powerful impact. So I just wanted to throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. I would add that. I don't think that that's something that has to last a particularly long time. It's more right. like establishing initially and then you can kind of drop into um like feeling things out yeah it's an an, an acknowledgement yeah really simple yeah. and i i would even say that it doesn't necessarily have to be when you're in a closed position if you kind of make eye contact before you um hook up into a closed position mm -hmm. i think that that would also work um because you're still acknowledging your partner before you are you know starting to get into the dance yeah So you can see, so Susan's eyes, they, they notice that Sean is doing something really large um, with the hand that he's swinging back. And she notices it kind of as he comes up over the shoulder area with his arm still fully extended. That's something that looks different. Um, and that's when she uh, takes her eyes to the arm to see where he's going with it because it is up over her head now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say the combination of 
um, the height difference. So where his arm is at in relation to her face um, and plus the height being um, abnormal um, for the position that it's in uh, the arm is something that's going to keep uh, draw her attention. Mm -hmm. So once we get out of that, um, for Susan, at least, you can kind of see that her eyes initially drop kind of to Sean's chest area, um, which is not so much her intentionally looking. Um, it's just kind of the drop because she was looking up so high. Um, she's just dropping from there to a what looks more neutral position initially. And then when she goes into her turn, she then drops the eyes down further to the floor. Even though she brings the chin up, you can kind of see that her eyes drop down first and then the head just kind of moves on its own. With this position in particular, it's going to be hard if you do try to keep your eyes focused uh, as a follow if you're dropping your head back um, because it's such a uh, unusual position for the head to be in. And especially if you're rotating at the same mm -hmm. time, that's something that's gonna throw you off if you are trying to focus on something. So uh, in this particular moment, I suggest kind of glazing over the eyes and uh, more just kind of feeling where you're at more so mm -hmm. than being like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at the ceiling. <laughs> that yeah. probably won't go super well. <laughs> yeah, whenever uh, you're not spotting and you're, your head is moving at the same rate of your body through a turn. Mm -hmm. If you are trying to take in everything you're seeing, that's going to make you dizzy. So softening focus and trying not to take it all in. <laughs> you're on the tilt Very of intentionally. <laughs> Very helpful. <laughs> yep. Um, and then when Susan comes out of this, because she kind of comes out and is not super balanced, uh, so she actually falls out of it ever so slightly. Um, she catches herself and she makes it look very graceful um, and intentional, but that's not super the case just because this position that she comes out in is a little awkward. It's very extended on the right side of her body um, and she's kind of tipped and then she's rotating with that tipped side. Um, so it, it just creates a really weird balance point. So she kind of falls out of it a little bit but she makes it nice. And what I was going to say is uh, when you see her kind of fall out of that, you can see her eyes go back to where Sean's at to see uh, where he's at in relation to her because she has had her head tipped up. So as a leader, one of your jobs is to make sure that your follow is safe and you're taking good care of them. So you're you're concerned not only with your performance for the audience but also for taking care of your follow and this is a moment where he is basically following through on his contra body with his head turn just to look at her it's really simple so instead of looking down the slot which is technically an option here especially in a spotlight you know you've got the room but it just softens it a little bit and makes it a little bit more intimate um, in this <coughs> kind of moment to look at your follow instead of where you're about to send them. And that kind of choice, just the difference between looking at your follow here versus looking down the slot where you're gonna send them has a dramatic difference on how it impacts the audience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, somebody that you do see fairly frequently um, look kind of down the slot where, they're about to send their follow is uh, Jordan. Mm -hmm. And I would say it also is uh, based on like the music. So yeah. this is a much softer, slower song, uh, whereas the next song, uh, much higher energy, faster, mm -hmm. um, more staccato movement. Um, mm -hmm. It would make more sense to like accent a head movement looking down the slot. It would mm -hmm. um, add even more counterbalance to the mm -hmm. center counterpoint on either side to throw the head weight down the slot instead mm -hmm. of um, rotating it back towards the follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that particular movement of kind of looking away from the follow before you send them um, where you're looking is something that you see during spotlights occasionally. Um, 
and you see it during social dancing, social dancing occasionally, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) but I think a lot of times they're for two different reasons. Um, During spotlight, it's more for uh, the impact that it has. And for social dancing, it's more for checking to see what's around you. Mm -hmm. Or at least I think that's, it should be that way. I don't think Uh, it's necessary when you're social dancing to intentionally look away for no particular reason. (laughs) Right. (laughs) So we have them back at this anchor and you can see they kind of reestablish eye contact with each other for a large chunk of this anchor into the compression right up here. Kind of when they go like start going into the compression, they take the eyes off of each other um, and kind of drop them a little bit. Susan does a little bit before Sean does. Yeah, because this is a uh, slower, more openly led uh, push tuck, Sean is looking down to see what Susan is choosing to do at this moment. And she's doing a small little kick and a flick with her foot. Um, yeah. And it's that's the kind of thing where you can feel it a little bit through the connection, but when it's softer like this, there isn't as much weight in the connection for you to only feel that kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's really helpful to, to actually just see what your follow is doing and then notice where they place their foot. So it's really important for Sean to be able to see that she's placing her foot right there. Mm-hmm. So that way he knows where to take this handhold. Um, so that way he is actually leading her onto that foot accurately. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for Susan, she's dropping her eyes because uh, once she gets put into that compression, she really needs to uh, feel what Sean is doing not so much see what he's doing Mm -hmm. um, because when she can kind of feel what he's leading her into, she can choose what she wants to play with and how she wants to do that. Um, And that's more helpful than if you were to look at your lead Mm -hmm. in this particular moment. Yeah. Cause when you're that close as a follow, like you either have their chest or their head, like, Mm -hmm. and that's not that much information. So taking uh, your eyes off of them helps you focus purely Mm -hmm. on the sensation of it. Yeah. And I think especially for follows, that is extremely important, um, is to make sure that you are going back and like checking in with just what's happening with the connection. Um, from time to time, especially in certain moments like that, where you are close and it would be hard to see anything visually. Mm -hmm. And then I love how she um, spots Sean and her head actually makes it around the rotation before her body. Mm -hmm. It's just a really simple styling. Yeah. It has a lovely impact. And the hair follows. (laughs) Right. It's always the hair. And once Susan has that foot planted, Sean kind of takes a moment and he actually like closes his eyes or almost closes his eyes. Yeah, it's like that kind of sigh, like, ah, oh, no. yeah, <laughs> I, know, I know that look. Because <laughs> <laughs> once he kind of reestablishes that connect- connection, once she has um, flipped back around to him and he knows that she's looking at him, then he can kind of take his. Um, focus elsewhere for a moment mm-hmm. oh, I want to talk about the entrance to this whip <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want you to pay attention to the frame in which he gets Susan's back in his right hand versus when he actually turns his right his head to the right so she is now in his hand and the head turns after. I talk a lot about the center counterpoint and close position being the leader's right elbow. But another thing that you can take into account to help counterbalance a follow is your head weight. Mm-hmm. And this is important, not just for partnering, but for your individual balance, because your head weighs a lot. 
<laughs> and it's on top of your body where your head is relation in relation to your center and your feet that vertical chain has a huge impact <laughs> on where your body is going to go yeah and so uh by not turning to face her right away by lagging behind the head weight is actually helping counter her a little bit mm -hmm. and not that it's only the head countering her it's helping put his whole body in a position to help mm -hmm. counter her yeah and like to just explain the opposite if he were to turn to face her early that would accelerate her um yeah into the coaster of the whip which isn't necessarily a bad thing. You might want to do that sometimes. Right. Um, it could also, however, um, move her a little bit further past where he was intending to put her. Yeah, um, and it would be harder to counterbalance. Like you'd need to be ready for it. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. use different and, tools. Yeah, exactly. And in this particular uh, moment for high level follows, at least generally you're going to get quite a bit of uh leverage like backward mm -hmm. um and so if you as a lead are sending your head and your body towards them and they end up going further back they're gonna kind of stumble back mm -hmm. i don't like that as a follow i don't know any follows that do <laughs> it's so just try and prevent it <laughs> It's it's a really not fun moment as a follow to kind of stumble back because your lead isn't countering you. It yeah. makes you feel very clumsy. And then it just kind of takes things a little bit like off. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. Not sure how to explain it, but it kind of makes you um, more careful about what you do. And so then you kind of, it changes the connection. Yep. Susan, you can kind of see is keeping her eyes in his general direction um, because of some of the rotation that's happening. Um, it's good for followers to, if there is rotation happening, to kind of see, keep an eye on just the, the mass of the lead. Doesn't necessarily matter where, um, <clears throat> but I know that a lot of followers tend to just kind of drop the eyes to the chest in that particular um, scenario. And then once he kind of releases her, from that rotation, she drops her eyes back down again to kind of feel where they're going with things. Which is also important because of this like angle that they get at. If she's not paying attention and she just assumes it's like a regular type of send out of some sort, um, she doesn't set back into this like angled pocket that he has for her. Yeah, because the send, send out isn't going that way. It's going that way yeah which means she has to go into the pocket that way mm -hmm. right, i want to talk about oh oh sorry <laughs> well, what do you want to talk about here <laughs> i was just gonna say um as a follow those are moments that visually um following is like if you are following visually, it's not good enough. Mm -hmm. That's what I was going to say. So you can go ahead because I know you're going to talk about something <laughs> coming up next. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so it's a really simple thing to do as a leader, but to delay your head turn into a dip like this um, to kind of uh, parallel that the follows movement. So to start out, um, Sean is paying attention to where Susan is heading and then he looks down the slot this direction in the direction from which she came waits for her to get past him so like we can see his profile and then he turns his head to the left to look partially at her partially at the floor or at the audience but the the main difference is from looking down the slot to looking towards the audience in some direction and it's a really simple way to accent a movement like this as a leader when most of what you're doing is physically supporting the follow mm -hmm. anything else you wanted to add to that no okay i was going to talk about susan here for a second then so 
one thing that you can see here. So Susan, she goes into this, she has her eyes open um, and they are dropped. So she's feeling things out. Um, and then once she and Sean are in a really solid connected point right about here, and she knows it's like he's not going to do something out of, you know, the ordinary, <laughs> uh, she knows <laughs> that he's just going to um, counter her and soften that drop. She closes her eyes because she trusts where she's at um, and drops the head back. And that's something that you should only do if you are comfortable in the position that you're at mm -hmm. and that you you know that um your partner isn't going to do something you weren't expecting and you can tell and there's coming. such a clear moment of it too yeah and then afterwards you can tell how sean is really paying attention to where her feet are mm -hmm. yeah because she knows that he's letting her do what she wants to do to style this and get out of it. <clears throat> and Sean doesn't need to see exactly where her feet are at at this point, because they're kind of in a side by side position and they're both moving um, in the same direction. So it doesn't necessarily matter at this particular moment what foot she's on. Right. It was more important when she was first coming out of the dip mm -hmm. to know where her once, center was in relation. Right. To once she had her own weight. Yep. Yeah. I love this right here. So the, here's another example of Sean just using a simple staccato head movement and redirecting from looking away from her to looking towards her to just accent the timing of what he's doing musically. And obviously, you know, to know where she is to lead well. Yeah. But it's <laughs> it's uh the timing and sharpness of what he does with his head. That's a musical choice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's okay for him to not have eyes on her this whole time because he does have that hand on her and the way he directed her to turn, uh, she's not doing a lot of moving. Yeah. You can see for Susan, um, once she gets into that rotation, she does something that's really important. So because she's going into a multiple rotation um, spin, so she goes from having her eyes to kind of where Sean's at, she kind of whips the head around to get back to Sean because that's where like the solid point is going to be for her because he's moving around her, she needs to know where he's at. And so it makes sense um, to kind of whip the head around to get back to facing him. You can see with the uh, a change in direction for the rotations here, um, her head is moving mostly with the rest of her body, but her eyes are not. So here she has eye contact. The head's a little bit delayed. And then she looks back for him with the eyes. The head's a little bit delayed. She's searching back for him. And then she stays on him as long as she can before that last turn. So this is fun. Um, because there is kind of a break in the connection, they're really keeping eye contact, but then you can see that as they keep going, Sean kind of goes back and forth between looking at her feet, looking at her face, <laughs> mm -hmm. just to make sure that she's on the same page. And then I want to highlight. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah, he really preps this movement in his own body and he exaggerates the anticipation of it. So this movement down through here and the lifting of his left leg, like he's accelerating the situation because he's going to accelerate the timing, but he is exaggerating his anticipation of it. So that way Susan knows for certain that they are about mm -hmm. to do the same thing, but faster. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> 
And you can see there's like a drastic change in where his eyebrows are sitting on his face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, do he's doing the up and down uh, with his, uh, yeah, we got chillaxed eyebrows. That's what we'll call it. Oh, it's giving me the dumb. I'm sorry, it's been giving you that bar this whole time. I forget that you can see that. I hate you, Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the crinkles in his forehead. He's like, you ready? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> drastic eyebrow change yeah and that's something that uh you really need to have that visual connection for um but let me say if you just do that with your face and you don't prep anything else to say oh something different's gonna happen your follow's just gonna be confused um yeah and probably won't go with what you want to do <laughs> <laughs> so uh we get into <laughs> An interesting thing here uh, in terms of where they need to be looking because Sean goes completely behind the It's just so good. You, you cannot plan this. He's so ready to make some like intense eye contact and she's all like, nah. <laughs> Which is funny because they think she expected him to be coming around the other side of her. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> But that didn't happen. <laughs> Take out. <laughs> yeah, I think she expected that because you can see his hand as he moves behind her. It kind of like slowly wraps around her. Mm -hmm. So it goes from like middle of abdomen to like the side of her. <laughs> yeah. But then he just replaces the other hand. Yeah, he just goes back. It's so funny. It's like a miscommunication, but, but since they're both like dancing musically to this song, it Sorry. has this great effect. <laughs> like it's so good. <laughs> like this is probably totally gonna be the thumbnail for this week. <laughs> I'm okay with that. Are you gonna keep Joel in, in the background? Because he's uh, in a nice little snappy no, position. <laughs> no, I think uh, our logo is gonna cover him up. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> So well, then he finally comes around to the side she thought he was going to initially. <laughs> She's like, oh, there you are. There you are. There you are. That's so that, the... <laughs> that so... particular moment is a super important moment to have that like okay. peripheral vision. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, she's like being really patient to be very yeah. certain about what he's going to do next. Yeah. <laughs> um, tangent story. One of the struggles of being a tall follow <laughs> is if you are a whole head taller than your leader you'll sometimes try to spot but there's nothing there and so in this kind of situation you would i'd, I'd have no idea where they are i just, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of stressful sometimes like where do you go come back touch me on my back or something help yeah, that's something that's really important when you disappear behind your partner's back. Yeah. Um, I always have some type of pressure um, in the hand that is in contact with my partner. So um, even when I'm behind their back, I'm not like driving into them <laughs> necessarily, right. but there is a little bit more significant pressure that I place just so that they can make sure they know where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Also, Aaron said, sounds like my life. <laughs> 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 Where'd you go? <laughs> so, uh, getting back to Susan and Sean, <laughs> when Susan gets into that compression, you can see that she drops her eyes again um, because she is really close to him. Like she kind of starts initially kind of looking at his chest and then when she closes in, <laughs> she drops the eyes. Mm hmm and Sean is also focusing at kind of like a, an ambiguous area on the floor out in front mm -hmm. of him. Um, and this is something, as a tall follow, I can't tell you how many times I got the comment, look up, look, for <laughs> look forward. And I'm just like, you want me to ignore my partners? <laughs> that's, that's not good. But also like, it's really important to, if you're doing something really um, intricate or playful with your lower body, 
or doing footwork, it can be really helpful to direct your own eye yeah. line down at yep. what you're doing because then the audience will follow your eye line mm -hmm. and it helps um, the audience see the cool thing you're doing downstairs. <laughs> mm -hmm. And your partner also will yes. go along with the audience and that will draw the attention yeah. to the feet. Yeah. So long as your head isn't down there the whole time. Right. It needs to be a change. <laughs> right. Like I might forgive it for scat man. Because <laughs> that's all footwork all the time. Yeah. It's true. It, it's basically shag but with west coast swing tension and compression <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh i love this moment for her yeah so you can tell that because he is kind of in an angle behind her she can't exactly tell where he's at um so she wants to make sure that she is really feeling where he's at so she can make sure he's not moving so she can have her moment and then once she knows okay he's not going anywhere and he's letting me do what i want to do she takes her moment and looks at the audience i love the choice mm -hmm. and then um sean is also timing his head turn to accent the same moment in the music Mm -hmm. that she's accenting so he's not looking at her yeah. right away he he's delaying it slightly so kind of similar to the dip earlier mm -hmm. yeah his head is moving with his hand yeah you can see he does the same thing with this dip here like it's such a common thing for leaders to do mm -hmm. to accent phrase changes or breaks by delaying their head turn to look at their follow like mm -hmm. it's really easy to take it for granted unless it's pointed out to you yeah yeah it it's also something that really helps um <clears throat> them stay committed to that front foot until they want to move back yeah because if you are if you are uh, weighted more over your right foot and you start looking to your left, you're just naturally kind of gonna move off of that right foot a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so to make sure everything works well, um, he keeps that head along with the body. Once the camera doesn't move for something like this, making it so much easier <laughs> to go back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> and see the difference yeah but I like how ideally, i made it look like laser beams coming out of his <laughs> it definitely does one. definitely does look like <laughs> that <laughs> sorry <laughs> i was just gonna say ideally you want to catch your follow um like more when you're waiting on that first foot yep I like that. I like we're just talking over each other today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not intentionally. This is the signature leader, like, yeah, I led that. Uh huh. <laughs> that, that breaking of the fourth wall. <laughs> was that where you were going to highlight too? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was going to say that uh, he makes sure to let her have her moment and he's really focused on her. And then he's like, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I guess. I, <laughs> I guess that's I, what I, we're going with. I helped. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> you can see when they get back into like a normal position, uh, Susan goes right back to making some eye contact with him. Mm -hmm. That is the ideal place to make eye contact with your partner when you're not extremely close to them um, and you're just in like a basic situation. Mm -hmm. So back to this, uh, when Susan kind of notices something different going on, she just drops the eyes so that she can feel what's happening and not get ahead of herself or Sean. And I just can't stress enough how, as a follow, 
visually following something will make it not connected. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, there is a, a similar um, kind of neck roll. There were a couple of them in the uh, lower level JT swing team routine, I think season mm -hmm. six. Um, and one of the things I was coaching local follows through a lot is to not turn themselves. You have to wait until the leader is turning you through. That'd be neck really roll. hard to turn yourself. They somehow found a way and it made it all so I mean, you could, chaotic. but like, that's well, so much harder than it needs to be. I know, because then they were like, I don't fit. And I'm like, it's because you're not well. waiting <laughs> for me to make space. Um, yeah. And then I want to just highlight how extended Sean's arm is. So she has like mm -hmm. all of the space for mm -hmm. her head and her arms. And I love how as soon as he kind of stops her movement, she looks back at him to see mm -hmm. where he's going next with things. Uh, <laughs> this is a very interesting choice. Yeah. <laughs> it ended up cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was expecting her to maybe just simply like, no, no, I'm, I'm gonna take sure. back what I was about to say. That's, I think, exactly what it, he wanted to happen. I think it was. <laughs> yeah. I think it's just partially the way that she followed it. It's not like a full monkey bar situation. Yeah. And because he kind of lifts up over her, it just ends up looking different. <laughs> mm -hmm. I do appreciate how much he anticipates it. So mm -hmm. kind of like with the hand tossing from the previous song, he's really exaggerating this position. Mm -hmm. And it's not simply that he's creating some counterbalance between them. I would argue that it's actually a lighter counterbalance than yeah. one might assume it is based on his positioning. His mm -hmm. positioning is more of a visual like, hey, I'm about to do the equal and opposite of yeah. this. Yeah. Um, and then she becomes Neo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because you can see where he has his weight um, distributed between his feet. He has a, a toe and a heel, <clears throat> which means that he still has majority of his weight. So whatever he is doing to counter her is not going to be that much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you see here we have toe, heel. Very interesting choice. Yep. And he's just looking down the slot. Yep. <laughs> the whole time. And that's another thing as a leader that you can do. If you're doing something that you are 100% comfortable leading mm -hmm. um, and you are confident that your follow will be able to follow it. Yeah. And, it, and no chaos will ensue. You can strategically ignore your follow <laughs> for a set pattern to make yeah. it look extra cool. It's like I don't even have to look. Yeah, that's, that's kind what of Jordan does a lot. Jordan and and Max Sons, um, yeah. he does a lot of his <laughs> the martial arts type yeah. leading with the arms behind his back, um, yeah. and that's part of what makes it impressive that he's, he's not actually looking at what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but yeah, so Sean, because he kind of stops Susan, um, he feels comfortable that she's not going to do anything else. Otherwise, he probably wouldn't go into this. Right. I had a lead. Lead me in something very similar when we were up in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was weird. <laughs> and I came out of it. And he was like, are you okay? I was like, I mean, I'm fine. <laughs> but there, you led me through that. It was weird. But like, it was yeah. fine. Yeah, see, like what I would do, because I'm lazy and I like creating lazy opportunities, is uh, <laughs> right here, um, I would release my right hand from my follow's back and mm -hmm. rotate my arm straight, keep my arm straight, but rotate my right arm to my right, dragging it down the bottom of the follow's arm until our wrists are crossed. 
Yeah. And then I can rainbow the arms up over without the follow having to uh, bend down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that the bending is a problem, it's not, but <laughs> it's not, it's not. I just, uh, I'm lazier than that. So yeah. it's, it's extra work when you don't feel like doing it. <laughs> All right. Was there anything else in particular in the second dance you wanted to cover? <laughs> I don't think so. All but right. actually, let's talk about this just right here right. for a okay. hot second, and then we'll wrap up. <clears throat> okay. Because <clears throat> we once again get into a abnormal position. So we're already moving kind of weird because Sean's going to the side and then Susan ends up going forward. <laughs> so they really have to pay attention to what they're doing here. So you can see Sean is up until she's coming towards him. He's kind of feeling things out. But when he feels her coming like straight towards him, he kind of looks back up to see where she's at. The way they just let the compression kind of crest and resolve naturally mm -hmm. is so lovely. Yeah, it is. Um, That's because... uh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we know how to do this. We swear. Yeah. Because <laughs> um, it is. I think he was expecting her to have her left free, her left free, her left foot free. Mm -hmm. to be able to take a large step but she had her right foot free which is why she ended up going yeah. uh, straight into him but regardless like so he was leading pattern a she ended up creating pattern b based on what she followed and mm -hmm. then sean then let pattern b be what was finished and resolved as opposed to being like no yeah i wanted a <laughs> you know that yeah never or ends well. <laughs> yeah or freaking out because he's in a place that he didn't expect to be right that's something that i um <clears throat> excuse me <laughs> my voice just started to like get very hoarse out of nowhere um <clears throat> i was gonna say that's something that i see um newer leaders do a lot is that they kind of get into a position where they're not so sure what to do and they weren't expecting to be and they're like let's just get back to something i know <laughs> Yeah, and they abort too fast, and it makes it yeah. worse instead of better. Yeah. <laughs> Overall, uh, your eye line isn't just about taking in information so you can make good choices about what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's also musical. It's it's communicative. It's a tool to use. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, and it is. It's really important to not always follow the advice of uh looking up yeah because it, i mean you will see at high levels that doesn't happen all the time ever <laughs> never happens all the time yeah because it's just a natural instinct for you to when you want to focus on something different than what you're seeing you just kind of you know, you glaze over a little bit with the eyes, right? And so generally that ends up in kind of like a dropped, relaxed look. And so it's fine as long as it's not like you have your chin tucked to your chest the whole dance. Don't want that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it, it would also look awkward for you to be having your chin up directly looking at your partner or in some particular spot, you know, in that eye line the whole dance. That's going to look weird too. Yeah. So. Yeah, if you're getting the note to, to like look up and that's like all you're getting, it's usually a sign that something else is going on. It's like a postural positional problem. Mm -hmm. It's less about the eye line, more yeah. likely, and, and more about something in your posture that's going yeah. on. Yeah, and, and for some reason, the general correction for that is to say look up. I know, right? But like, and I mean, they kind of mean that, yes. But like, like also no. <laughs> like that's that's the wrong way to go about it. Because if you've got like poor posture, and then you're, then you look up, <laughs> <laughs> like creep city. It sounds very weird. Very fast. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be 
back next week. We're going to be analyzing uh, Robert Royston and Lorreen Baldovi's Fever Routine, their most recent um, exhibition performance of it. Yes. Very excited. Yep. Uh, I will feel exhausted just framing through it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And I will be somewhere different than here. Oh. I'm going to Texas, so <laughs> you'll see a different background for New a while. Background. I've, I've given you guys some changes in the, <laughs> what, year and a half we've been doing this. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta keep it interesting, you know? <laughs> cool. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. I don't think I noticed this previously, but at the very start of the second song, Joel's in the background, like... <laughs> is very excited about the song. Like, I, really, I can't <laughs> wait to point out Bryson during the hand toss part, because he just... He wants he an around the world dip to happen at the end and he doesn't get it. It's so funny. <laughs> I don't know what this is. I don't know what it is. It's a little bit ET phone home, but I'm cool. I, I I'm, was I'm just cool going to say that. <laughs> it's like an ET moment happening <laughs> the beginning for whatever reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah, this, this is fun. Check out Royston. Uh, he really wants a dip right there. And he didn't get it. And then you can tell how sad he is. He's just like, oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he, look, he looks just like, oh. Someone flushes goldfish down the toilet. Like, it's just sad. <laughs> but then whatever this is happens, so. <laughs> just, just a minor pelvic thrusting. Because... <laughs> I'm not entirely sure what timing that was supposed to be. Um, it, it's, it's a pelvic thrust and a chug at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Aaron said a pelvic chug. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, that was beautiful, sir. Thank you. <laughs> sure, that's what we'll call this. <laughs> We'll ask Sean about it when we have him on. Stop the presses. <laughs> Headline for tomorrow. <laughs> Newest dance craze. The pelvic jug. Learn it tomorrow on TikTok. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> also, I cannot stop hearing Munchkins singing Follow the Yellow Brick Road for this <laughs> skip right there. Follow the yellow brick road. Anyways. I, I mean, the so floor sorry. does look yellow. <laughs> <sighs> also, Aaron said, yep, sounds right. And Jack is his best friend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop the screen share because we are devolving into chaos at this point.